Science in the Bible on Sonic Booms. Let us begin with the conclusion and leave the rest of the video to lay out the details. The Bible describes Yahweh's traversing of dimensions as being accompanied by physical, chemical, atmospheric, and auditory reactions such as the appearance of clouds and thunderous sounds. Likewise, the phenomena of, so of sonic booms denotes the traversing between what we may think of as dimensions. Such a traversing brings about physical, chemical, atmospheric, and auditory reactions such as the appearance of clouds and the sonic boom. Thus, due to modern technological breakthroughs, we conclude that the Bible's reference to such phenomena was not merely symbolic, but literal and scientifically accurate. Within the Bible, the term cloud can mean various things. This is because the very nature of language is that the same word can mean various things, and the meaning, the definition, of the word usage in each case is determined by the context, and not, at least not solely, by etymology, research of the root words, meaning, etc. Within the Bible, the term cloud can mean, one, Skyborne puffy clusters of water vapor or billowing smoke. Two, angels. Three, Yahweh's presence. Four, a manner whereby to obscure an event, indicate the location of an event, or obscure and indicate the eventful location of Yahweh's presence. This is very much like number three. To elucidate, one, self-explanatory and obvious such as when Yahweh states the following of the rainbow I will set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth Genesis 9:13. of course they could also be clouds of smoke as in Judges 20:38, when something is burning or the fragrance of the cloud of incense rising, as in Ezekiel 8.11. 2. Biblically, angels look like human males and do not have wings. They are sometimes referred to as clouds, stars, ministering spirits, etc. 3 and 4 interact in that Yahweh is not a cloud, and thus the cloud which often accompanies his presence is indicative, denotes, obscures and demonstrates the fact that he is present. Note, for example, Exodus 13.21, which states, The Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light, that they may, might travel by day and by night. As an aside, it would make sense that the pillars of cloud and fire remain parallel to the ground, that is, horizontally directly over the people and not vertically. This is because in desert-like environments it gets very hot and dry during the day and cold at night. Thus the pillar of cloud would have given them shade and humid humidity during the day, and the pillar of fire would have given them warmth and light by night. On this point, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 notes, Our fathers were all under the cloud and passed through the sea. In other texts, such as Exodus 16, 10, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Also in Exodus 19, 9, the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud, so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe in you forever. When Yahweh did this, Exodus 19.6 notes that there were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound. This is getting us to the point which is that Yahweh's traversing of dimensions, as it were, is accompanied by physical, chemical, atmospheric, re etc. reactions. 2 Corinthians 12.2 specifies that Yahweh resided in, or that his realm is the third heaven. It is generally thought that the first heaven goes from the earth's surface until you get high enough to enter space. The second heaven is all of space, the universe. The third heaven is beyond the universe, beyond the material realm, outside of the box. 
Indeed, Jesus stated, My kingdom is not of this world. John 18.36 Consider that when an object breaks to another dimension, as it were, by breaking the sound barrier, it is accompanied by the physical, chemical, atmospheric, etc. reactions, such as a sound, the sonic boom, and the manifestation of a cloud. It is as if a doorway, a gate, opens from one dimension to another. In Deuteronomy 4.11 and 5.22, Moses refers to this, to this event in stating, You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the very heart of the heavens, darkness, clouds, and thick gloom, the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and the thick gloom with a great voice. Exodus 20.21 20, informs us that Moses approached the thick cloud where God was, and Exodus 24.15 that Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. Exodus 24.16 specifies that the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days, and on the seventh day he called to Moses from the midst of the cloud. And so verse 18 tells us that Moses entered the midst of the cloud, and he went up the mountain. This is an example of a combination of cloud as the effect of traversing dimensions and cloud as something which lingers in order to mark Yahweh's presence. If the door, gate, remains open, the sound and clouds could linger. As the Israelites traveled, they set up a tent of meeting, of which Exodus 33.9 states that whenever Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would ascend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. And as per Exodus 33.10, all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent. Thus, Exodus 34.5 elucidates that the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him as he called upon the name of the Lord. And Exodus 40, 34 through 35 adds that the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So indicative and obvious was the cloud of Yahweh's presence that Exodus 40, 36 explains that it signaled when they were to move along. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. Leviticus 16.2 notes that once the Ark of the Covenant was built, the Lord said to Moses, I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. Also, the day cloud and night fire appearance was ongoing as Numbers 9.15-16 states, now, on the day that the tabernacle was erected, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, and in the evening it was like the appearance of fire over the tabernacle until morning. So it was continuously. The cloud would cover it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. Also, as per Numbers 10:12, the cloud could spread ab about in order to show them a location. The cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, David retells of his prayer to Yahweh for, for protection as, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my rock, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You save me from violence. Then he specifies that when, in my distress I called upon the Lord, from his temple he heard my voice, and my cry for help came into his ears. The earth shook and quaked. The foundations of heaven were trembling. He bowed the heavens also, and came down with thick darkness under his feet. And he rode on a cherub and flew. And he appeared, or sped, on the wings of the wind. And he made darkness canopies, or pavilions, around him, a mass of waters, thick clouds of the sky. From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled. 
The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. Psalm 18, 11 through 12, also written by David, mirrors the statement above. He made darkness his hiding place, his canopy around him, dark, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him pass his thick clouds, hailstone and coals of fire. Psalm 104, 1 through 4, which may also have been written by David. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a cloak, stretching out heavens like a tent curtain. He makes the clouds his chariots. He walks upon the winds, wings of the wind. Note that there are various biblical references to Yahweh having stretched out the heavens, which denotes the expanding universe. This may all be flowery terminology for Yahweh's actions, and yet the description contains much which may be relevant to the physical, chemical, atmospheric, etc. reactions to which we referred. For example, Yahweh bowed the heavens in order to come down, and thick darkness was under his feet. While a point-by-point, term-by-term, correspondence is certainly flummoxing, it is interesting to consider that which the latest theoretical science is telling us about bending, bowing, space, heavens, in order to cover vast distances or traverse dimensions. Perhaps the thick darkness is a portal, doorway, gate between the point of origin and the point of arrival. A cherub is a non-human category of being. Some refer to them as a type of angel, but angels are one category, cherubim another, seraphim another, etc. For examples, we noted that angels do not have wings, but cherubim and seraphim do have them. Cherubim have four and seraphim have six. For his own reasons, Yahweh has chosen to employ cherubim as a conveyance, a vehicle of sorts. The wings of the wind may be nothing more than that which geese use in flight. They fly in a V formation due to the fact that when one goose flaps its wings, the ones behind get uplift, which makes their flight easier. Thus, they take turns being the lead goose. Isaiah 19.1 states that the Lord is riding on a swift cloud. Jim Wilhelmson makes an interesting point in his book Beyond Science Fiction, and you can find in the info section the URL to the review I wrote of that book. He writes, Interesting observations about all UFO sightings are the electromagnetic disturbances experienced during a sighting. These same disturbances are experienced with ghost apparitions and demonic encounters. The common denominator in all of this may be a biological function. This biological function, then, is somehow related to electromagnetic fields. Many people who have encountered UFOs, ghosts, or demonic activity have smelled the ionized air, which is associated with electrical and magnetic currents, and the smell of sulfur, associated with everything demonic and subterranean. The, Bible, the biblical name for this is brimstone. Indeed, there is much correlation between spirit-channeling medium experiences and UFO extraterrestrial alien experiencers, contactees, or abductees. Other examples are telepathic communication, walk-ins, which is when a spirit slash alien enter a person and speak through them, the manifestation of globes of light, and, well, of course, anti-Christian messages. For more information on these issues, see the articles that I link to in the info section. Back to the appearing and or speeding on the wings of the wind. The wings may refer to that which causes wind. Just as the goose's wings cause uplift, ripples of wind, the spinning of the earth in conjunction with hot air rising and cool air rushing into fill its vacuum, as it were, along with the sun heating portions of the earth alternately, make wind. Of course, wind, high pressure and low pressure, also pertain to the electromagnetic grid. Thus, Yahweh seems to be riding the currents in a manner of speaking. 
The previously referenced darkness may also be referring to the portal, doorway, gate, manifesting as what today we call a wormhole and was, in the Bible, referred to as Yahweh making darkness canopies or pavilions, which we think of as an outdoor structure that covers us. When you think about a wormhole, which have been illustrated in many, many movies, it is just that, a cylindrical tunnel which encompasses the traveler on every side, with darkness, sounds the cool special effects. He made darkness canopies or pavilions around him. Back to the sonic boom-like reaction. When Yave travels in this manner, a mass of waters, thick clouds of the sky, are referenced, and indeed a cloud manifests as a reaction to the breaching of dimensions. Job 38 verse 1 and also verses 9 through 11 state that, The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, the following about the earth. I made a cloud its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band. And I placed boundaries on it, and set a bolt and door. And I said, Thus far you shall come, and no farther. Thus, we may be reading that the earth has clouds as a garment, and a dark, thick darkness. Universe, the second heaven, is its swaddling band referring to wrap one thing around another. Moreover, Yahweh, speaking as he is of the manner whereby he originally created things, notes that he placed boundaries on it and set a bolt and doors. Well, since the fall into sin, the fall into entropy, we learn that those who follow Jesus formerly walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Ephesians 2, 2. Thus, the spirit who encourages sin is the prince with power over the air. It may be that while the original creation had a closed-door policy, no portal, doorway, gate, wormhole access, the fall brought about Satan, who is a fallen cherub, to open these portals, and this is how we end up with UFOs and supposed aliens. As he is the prince of the power of the air, and thus has and grants such access. This is why there is the air formation correlation between spirit channeling mediums and UFO aliens. They are the same demonic beings who cause the same physical, chemical, atmospheric, etc. reactions to take place. Daniel chapter 7 states that in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and vision in his mind as he lay in his bed. And by verse 13 through 14, he notes, I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like the Son of Man was coming, and he came up to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom, that all the peoples, nations, and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Jesus' preferred title for himself was the Son of Man, and it was due to the Daniel text. In fact, with the direct reference to it, Jesus stated, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Matthew 24:30. Also, Matthew 26:64, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Acts 1, 9 through 11 states that after the resurrection, Jesus was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you watched him go into heaven. 
Thus we come full circle. Daniel prophesies that the Son of Man will come with the clouds of heaven. Jesus prophesies that upon his return, his second coming, he will do so on the clouds of the sky. And Acts records that upon his departure, a cloud received him and that he will return in just the same way, which harkens back to the Daniel text. As the texts are not specific on the point about the clouds, it could be that, one, clouds are just water vapor and are referenced as indicative of movement up and down in the sky slash heavens. Two, clouds are angels who usher Jesus, as it were, when he makes such movements. Or three, clouds are the physical manifestation of the door slash gateway between dimensions, such as in the correlation to the sonic boom. In Matthew 17.5, there is a literal sonic boom as, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Yahweh's voice boomed, creating a door-slash-gateway cloud. In fact, John 12.27-29 notes, Now my soul has been troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came out of heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it, saying that it had thundered, others were saying, an angel has spoken to him. Another instance involving the opening of door slash gateways is in Luke chapter 9, 28 through 36, in what is known as Jesus' transfiguration. He took along Peter and John and James, and he went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, and his clothing became white and gleaming. And behold, two men were talking to him, and they were Moses and Elijah, who appearing in glory were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. A cloud formed and began to overshadow them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Then a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the cloud had spoken, Jesus was found alone. Overall, due to modern technological breakthroughs, we conclude that the Bible's references to such phenomena was not merely symbolic, but literal and scientific. Then a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the cloud had spoken, Jesus was found alone. Overall, due to modern technological breakthroughs, we conclude that the Bible's references to such phenomena was not merely symbolic, but literal and scientifically accurate.